Everybody, welcome back to CCLB2. We are on Exit Ship, and I am hoping to blaze through a bunch of levels today and be very productive. So let's get on this level. This is a really controversial level by Eric Schmidt. Um, I say controversial because a lot of people didn't like it. Personally, I don't mind it so much. I, I think this level is rather funny. It's meant to be sort of a, here's a, you know, kind of, I don't know if this was meant to be sort of critique of what people do with invalid tiles, but you can see right here, we're going to need these flippers we collected in order to get back through this area. There's also keys to get, but all these pathways that have the keys visible are have uh, invisible walls underneath them. And then these pathways with the force floors have keys under them. So yeah, it's uh, we have to get suction boots is what you're supposed to glean from this. And to be honest, there's really just limited opportunities for failure in this level. So once you figure out you know, all the traps and everything, all the little hidden stuff. You'll get it eventually. So we're going to have to use something to blow up that bomb on the way back. There's also these balls here. And there's also a trap hidden above the tile I'm standing on. So that's also something else to watch out for. Uh, and we barely made that. And, oh, okay, I thought that was going the other way for a minute there. And up here, suction boots. So that's nice. Hopefully we will not get hit on the way back. Ah, made it. Okay, cool. So uh, this might be a good opportunity to talk about what um, invalid tiles or why invalid tiles are invalid. I, haven't, I don't know if I've really done that, and that was stupid. Wow. Okay. Well, the good news is I've sort of memorized the optimal route to this level, so now that I don't have to pause, I can just go do that. Um, so... In invalid tiles, the whole concept of that is based on links and what is allowed in links. Um, the way the game works is that there are two layers for each tile. You have an upper layer and a lower layer. And there are two types of tiles. You have creature tiles, which are basically all the monsters, chip, and blocks. And then you have non-creature tiles, which are, well, pretty much everything else. Elements, walls, you name it. So anything that moves is a creature tile. Well, you can have a creature tile on top of any non-creature tile, but you cannot have a non-creature tile on top of a, another non-creature tile or a creature tile on top of a creature tile. You can only have creature tile on top of a non-creature tile or non-creature tile on top of floor. So like there couldn't be anything hidden under those uh, thin walls, for instance, which is really helpful. Yeah, it's interesting how that works. Oh, and we barely made that. Okay, so let's hope to not die this time. Hopefully. Okay, there we go. That's better. And then we just use that hidden block to blow that up, and then we use this block to fill in the water space here. So we actually, the flippers are kind of useless here in the end. Then there's also a hidden block way over here next to that water space, like there. It is nice that this level does kind of leave you with some hints as to where some of these things are, which is pretty cool. And thankfully this isn't a guessing game where like, s oh, yeah. I kind of forgot about that. Uh, what I was going to say was that this isn't a guessing game where like some of those key paths have you know, queer areas and some of them don't. I mean, I suppose even if they did or they didn't, you can just you know, try each space as you go through them and stuff, if that makes sense. Uh, like you can just go back and then push on and see, oh, there's a wall there or not. So that's kind of nice. All right, let's try this again, this time with hopefully less failure. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I think we'll be equalized by that ball at the bottom, so I don't think this will be a problem. I was hoping to get a lot done with this video, but it's looking more and more like this level is becoming a pain. But anyway, there's always going to be a few levels that will hold you up, so best just roll with the punches and move on and stuff. I think we just need to move. wait one move here. Yep. 
Okay, and then boost back there, and then we should be good to go. All right, there we are. Push that there, and let's see. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and, oh wait, I could have gotten these right away and that was pushing. Well, so much for being optimal, but I suppose it doesn't matter too much. All right, so we'll open all these guys up and then we're on our way to that bomb. All right, good, good, good. Oh, forgot to do that. <laughs> that was silly. All right, and hopefully I won't get clobbered by a ball. And I didn't, and the exit is hidden right over here. So that's exit ship. Moving on, finally, to checkerboard two. The good news is that this level is not nearly as bad as its predecessor in terms of length. It's just mainly tedious, once again. And much like its predecessor, it involves um, some uh, block pushing and stuff. And it involves a lot of repetition as well. This is also a level in which the bull time is currently unconfirmed and is by far the highest discrepancy between the confirmed time and the unconfirmed time. I have the, the uh, second highest time on this level, the quote-unquote confirmed time, but Pi Guy has an unbelievably high score on this level. I think I have an idea of what it involves, I just haven't tested it yet. But yeah, it's, it's a really tough level to optimize. So what I'm doing right now is that there are, you may have noticed on the right side that there's a ball cloner there, and there's one of these in every room uh, on the far end. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just position blocks at the entrances to each toggle space area. And uh, eventually once I'm done, then I'll go ahead and start up all the cloning and then we'll just go and collect all the chips without anything hindering us. So yeah, that's the plan. I'm hoping to get it to a point where um, I can get the toggles moving at a rate that's faster, but the reason why I'm doing it this way is because I don't want a situation where uh, the uh, whoops, where the toggles are blinking while I'm extracting all the blocks out, because that's going to be a pain uh, dealing with this checkerboard of toggles in the middle like that. Okay, I think that's the yeah. Okay, good. So yeah, sometime I'm gonna try to optimize this level again. Uh, Basically, there's a public solution that I uploaded that's 776. The bold is 788, but I was able to get 779 several years ago. Uh, I'm sure I could probably get more if I really set my mind to it. I mean, I, I've kind of, I'd like to think I've gotten a little bit better at optimizing since 779, but I don't know. It's it's one of those things where, you know, the solution could be the the like the the key to getting 788 could be almost anything out there, but you really don't know. Um, one of the tricks that the optimized route uses, the 7076 route uses, is that you can send fireballs from those clone machines at the bottom up here to destroy these bombs. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that the bold route, the 788 route, involves that too. Uh, so it's really just the rest of it that I need to really pay attention to. And like I said, I think I have an idea. It's just a matter of playing around with the idea. Okay, so at this point, I think we're in a position where we're pretty good to go as far as cloning something. So um, since we do have extra blocks, at least I think we have extra blocks, I'm gonna take one of them, put it down here. The public route has this as a uh, optimization strategy that you can use. And, oh, I forgot to bring a block in here. Okay, I need to go back and get one. No biggie. See, yeah, see, if something was blinking like that while I was extracting all this stuff, that would have been a pain. And if I had the bull route, I would have finished by now. 
Oh well, let's see. I'm gonna try to see if I can time this clone up here to alternate, sort of. Okay, I think that's, oh, that was mistimed. Man, I did not mean to do that. That's bad. Okay, before I do anything else here, I'm just gonna try to clone another one. And then I'm gonna try to clone one last one over in this one. Da, 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 da. There we go, that's what I had in mind. Okay, so fun fact, even though this clones, this uh, toggles the, um, the walls really fast. Oh wait, no, it doesn't do it really fast. Okay, never mind. Never mind on the fun fact. <laughs> I was thinking of something else. Actually, this is what I want because, interestingly enough, okay, so this this is the fun fact. I didn't realize it until I just started doing this, but um, if you have the toggle walls constantly cycling, that actually isn't the optimal way to do everything because this actually is faster with respect to the, uh, the uh, flicking stuff. See, see how that goes? It's so smooth. But it, in terms of getting the blocks through the toggle walls, that actually is faster than just constantly toggling. So yeah, anyone who's optimizing and wants to improve upon the public solution, that is your first step right there. Because the public solution has constantly toggling walls. Okay, yeah, I should have uh, switched the toggle walls for that. I know there's a way to get this rhythm uh, done by the pink balls a little bit more consistently. Because I think it's kind of alternating between toggle parodies here in this solution. But whatever, I mean, it's no big deal. Two chips left, we're almost done. Also, this level is really interesting to optimize in Lynx, because the Lynx version of this level, you cannot push the blocks directly through uh, toggle walls like that. But um, um, you can space out the toggle walls in a really cool way, such that they can be pushed through, which is what the CCLP2 Lynx staff did. Um, and finding the optimal solution there is pretty cool. Anyway, Learn is the next level. This level was made by Tyre Thali as well, and it's one of the strangest levels in the set for me because it has this design. I don't really know if these are meant to represent letters like that are a part of a language or something. I mean, we know that Tyre Thali was, a was already pretty familiar with a language, or at least a fictional language, in Use the Fish, and I don't know. So I don't really know if this is something, because there are portions of this that are completely pointless, and maybe that's just some really cool design decision that has nothing to do with anything at all. But yeah, I don't know if the, this is supposed to spell out something. I mean, I don't know if the title learn is supposed to mean, hey, the, the teeth there, you can't explode the bombs right away. You have to use it on the trap button. You know, that challenge, I'm not sure. I don't really know. Uh, this is nerve-wracking. Okay, and we can just go up these balls to the exits, and we're done. Glider and fire. Use them carefully, the hint says. So this level is all about directing uh, gliders into bombs, and it was made by Rolf Redford. This is, in my opinion, the best level that Rolf got into CCLB2. It's very masterfully designed, I think. Um, and... Why did I put that? Oh wait, no, I do need that there because um, the glider would go into fire without that. Okay, so now the gliders are gonna flow into this area. This is one of the examples of a level that did not get modified in Lynx even though it would be severely uh, different in Lynx since the gliders don't die in the fire. 
and I need another block for that, don't I? Okay. Uh, tell you what, I'm pretty bad at this sort of thing. Just saying. And I just realized I didn't even need that block there. I could have just pushed this to the left and stuff. So let me do that here. Okay, so now they're just going to flow right there. All right, that makes me feel a little bit better, marginally better. So now it comes the part, the challenge where we need to direct them downward. So I'm going to do that by getting this guy over here and that guy over there. Good. All right, so now they're going to go all the way down over this way. Um, and they're going to be destroying a bunch of bombs like that. I'm just going to do that right there. Ah! I, I didn't have time to react. Like I tried to press right, but then I bumped into a wall and or bumped into a glider when I was trying to push that block. So bad, JB. That was that was silly. Okay, I'll try it again. So. This time, let me try not to make this overly complicated like I was doing. Push that there. Okay, so then we got this a lot simpler now. Alright, this will help. Just do that. We got all this stuff. Okay, we're, I think we're good. Alright, so now they'll all go down. We can set up our little array of blocks down here. Let's make sure that's out of the way. Okay, so there's six, five apart, I think. Five apart, okay. Okay, so at this point, what I need to do, I'm just going to leave that like that for now. I need to go back and get another one. I need to uh, direct them into those bombs up top. And thankfully I have one last block I can use for this. Okay, there you go. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ah. Ah! I didn't know that was there. I didn't see that. Ah, the things you do when you're in a panic. I, I'm i glad I'm not playing this in Lynx because I would be at my wit's end with Lynx uh, in this level. I mean, this level is crazy in Lynx. All right, let's not mess this up again. Okay, that guy died. We can now move down, do all the stuff. Okay. We can wait for you to come around. Come on. Okay. I'm going to get the other block. Might as well. I need to direct one into that bomb over here. Alright, so go up this way. And that should do. Okay. I also need to take care of the ones down there, too. Okay, there we are. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to focus on collecting these for a bit here. I'm trying to be really careful because it's like the slightest little mistake. I mean, you saw what just happened there the last few attempts. I mean, some glider can just come out of nowhere and just totally ruin this. Okay, so you guys go down. 
And I need another block? Really? How can I get another block? Like, how is that possible? Because, I mean, I've already used up all the blocks I can use over here. And they're going down. Oh, wait, they can loop. Hang on, I, I, I forgot about that. Except that doesn't really accomplish anything because then I'm still using a block up here. I mean, I suppose I can just waste my last two blocks on this, so... Yeah, I'm sure I'm just missing something silly. And at this point, all we have left are the chips up in this area, so that should be everything. And then there's the final ride to the exit. Which is kind of fun. You get to slide along with all those gliders, which is cool. See, it's just random stuff like that that I just love. More designers need to do that. Alright, let's do it. The thing to remember, though, is you got to go down here once you reach the exit or else you're going to get hit. There we go. Glider and fire complete. On to Roller Coaster. Another Eric entry in the set. This level I really enjoy. Uh, it has a room that I don't like, but other than that one room, it's a very enjoyable little challenge. And it's ultimately an item swapper as well, and but it's a very creatively designed item swapper. So we get ourselves some flippers. I, I've been watching Josh's uh, Josh Lee's run through uh, Ultimate Ship uh, 5. And he installed the original Microsoft Chips Challenge sounds in place of the ones you're hearing right now for Tile World. I love those sounds. I, I, I especially love the key collection sound, that what sound. And well, I don't know why I just went back there. I think that was just my natural reaction to seeing blobs coming near me. But yeah, I just love the what sound. And wow. Missed keystrokes. Always fun. Alright, let's try not to fail epically at this again. So you can see that there's a path at the bottom that I didn't take, and the reason why is because that's going to be kind of our hub once we're done with each of these rooms. So once we're, we press that green button in the green key room, the blob room, uh, we're going to go down there and we're going to see what the open toggle door has behind it. Okay. <sighs> see, that's obnoxious. Come on. That's just so... Annoying. Like, I just. I'm just not a fan of that. I mean, there's just. There's no safe spots in that room. So, three blobs in that, that little area is just. It's hard to negotiate. The, the room I had in mind is that the one that I was talking about that I didn't like was actually that walker room that you can see while we're sliding across here. And it's mainly because there are two walkers, which can make things rather uncomfortable. That's more of an optimization thing. Like, well, even in a casual play thing, it's it's still rather uncomfortable. But I'd say this is actually worse when I'm now f playing this casually. It, and thankfully we made it out, but still, it, it's such a pain. But the, the walker room can also be a pain because you could be in a spot, spot where you're trapped and you can't really get out and they're both coming toward you. Okay, we can walk on the water, so that's nice. Okay, so now we have a red key. I kind of wish we could go to the walker room next, but... Sadly, that's not meant to be. And this is basically... It's kind of like the level that would later be Repair the Maze in CCLP1, where you have to uncover just the right red door to gain access to stuff. Except this is a lot more strict, and that uh, allows us to press a red button. I really love how color-coded this level is. That's one thing I really love about this level.
This is also one of Eric's later levels as well. Okay, so now we get the blue key. I don't know. I, I'm trying to remember if it's a trap button that's in the yellow key room or if it's a chip. I think it may be a trap button because the chip is there in the lower right, so and there's only one. Okay, so here is... See, that, that right there, that right there is mean. Ah, see? Okay, there. There we go. That, that was good. Hopefully we'll have some luck on the way back. Okay, please don't be jerks. Okay, good. Whew! That is such a nerve-wracking room, especially late into the level like this. Okay, so blue button pressed. Now we can go down and do this stuff. And get the yellow key, which is nice. Wait, maybe it's another red button that's in the yellow key room because there's a block cloner there that we used to blow that bomb up. I don't know. At least I think we blow up the bomb with that, do we? Anyway, we have this room, it's kind of like brush fire, where there's a bug roaming around and stuff. Pretty fun. Thankfully there's plenty of areas where you can hide, which is nice. And then we go over here, and there's a fireball, and... Oh, this, this takes care of the... Right, okay. Never mind. Okay, yeah, the bomb just blew. Uh-oh. No, you don't. All right, now, now we can do this. See, yeah, I like this level a lot. Aside from the random stuff, I really like this level. It's very well designed. It's got a fun kind of crux to it. So I guess the red button was for the block cloner then. I forgot about that. I just wasn't paying attention because I was commentating. So, but we can go to the exit and get out of here. So that's roller coaster done. Now time for some loop. This is a fun level, but it's yet another optimization nightmare because a perfect run will grant you an extra second. And it was just about a year ago, I think it was, maybe two years ago, when I finally was able to pull that off. It was pretty tough, but um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, is it the same odds as Mads Rush 2? I forget. It may not be, actually, because I think there's one less random force floor. It's like the exact same structure on it. And it, yes, this is also made by Ann Olsen as well, like Matt's Rush 2 and, and 1 were. So we got all the chips, and now we can move on to the exits. You know, that, that brings up an interesting topic. Um... You know what I really wish more level designers did? And I talked about this somewhat in my CC1 Let's Play, and yes, there are two less random force force. So, yeah, this is easier than Mad's Rush 2. Um, one of the things that I wish more designers would do is put more obstacles between uh, sockets and exits. I, a lot of people did it in CCLB3, I feel like, but I feel like it's kind of gone back to just have a socket and exit together. Whereas I feel like you could make do a little bit more than that, you know? Like, I always really enjoyed how Strange Maze had the um, that row of sockets. You could just blast right through them like, just like that. And Exit hit an Earth Floor. Fun stuff. One Block Sokoban. This is a really fun level. We It's by Eric, and we get this... Uh, well, it's a room, and it serves like no purpose at all apparently but yeah this is a this is a really fun level I, I like it a lot and you're pretty much forced to go along this certain path which is pretty neat and so now you can get a red key which I think is yeah it's way down I should have gotten this earlier when we were down here but basically it's way down in this area and you'll notice that there are um, keys on top of water and going back to my explanation about invalid tiles earlier about two layers whenever you have something encountering a two-layer tile like that the bottom layer is erased 
So in other words, that water will be quote unquote filled when I push the block on it, but the block won't be eliminated because it will be on top of the key. So I'll, I'll demonstrate to you right here. So I go in here, I get this blue key, and like that. So there's no more water I have to worry about there. Pretty nifty. Then we just carry everything back over here and then go into the, the right side. I also love all the extra chips. Like that's a really nice aesthetic touch. Then we get into this area. And yeah, you don't want to get the key before you push the block down because then you'll just have water there and then the block will be lost when you push it down. And I just realized I made a dumb mistake because I forgot to open up the yellow door. Ah, uh, that was silly. Let's not do that kind of silliness. So now that I remember this level a little bit more, I'm going to try to aim for the bolt time. So we'll see how that goes. I think the bolt time is 269. I could be wrong. I think it's 269. I know that in Lynx, there's a really nasty little trap at the end. Uh, and believe me, this is a little bit different in Lynx with the keys on top of water and MS. Uh, but in Lynx, there's a rather nasty trap where um, at the very end you have to push the block into that water right by the teleport at the beginning uh, with the exit next to it. And if you go through the teleport right away, you're going to have to wait for that splash delay that occurs when you push stuff into water in Lynx. And then you're going to be stuck on the teleport forever because of it, which is really mean, i got to admit. Okay, so now... This time I'm going to shove the block into the little niche here again after getting the yellow key. That should help with this. Like such. Now we can do this. Because there is pretty much no wiggle room here between that point and this point if you're pushing it. You absolutely are forced to go down here. So let's not make any more mistakes and we should be A-OK. -okay. Alright, green key collected. And those exits are are fake. They've got cloners underneath them, so they're not going to help. They're not going to work. That was a popular design tactic back in the day. And 268. I, I thought it was 269. I guess I must have forgotten about some sort of optimization strategy. Anyway, Torch is the next level. This is another Tire Folly aesthetic triumph. And a really fun um, level as well. It's also interesting to optimize because the bold route involves waiting, uh, where you would normally think that you wouldn't have to wait, since the path would be clear. But it definitely affects everything, which is pretty neat to see. It's also kind of hard to tell where all the fireballs are. So you have to be really careful and not make careless mistakes like I was just making right there. Oh, I... Okay, let's not do that again. That was stupid. And that was also stupid, too. I think I'm going to end the video after this. I got something I need to do, but I'll be back here in a little bit to record even more. And hopefully we can start working on the latter third of the sets. There we go. Waited at the right spot. And why did I not see there was fire there? Okay, JB. Clearly you're losing your touch here. Time to stop being an idiot. I, did, I made that exact same mistake again. I keep thinking that it's that fireball when it's really the next fireball. I don't know why I do that. The bad news is I'm going to have to go through this entire maze again, and this time with the fireballs loose after I get all the stuff. Okay, this fireball is the one that necessitates. Okay, don't go that way. I almost did that again. 
Okay, there we go. I don't know why I waited there. Okay. Can we not mess up here? That would be amazing right about now. Because you're like constantly going into new... Wow, I should have seen that. You're constantly going into new paths and stuff, so it's like, okay, this new path, time for a new reality where there's a new fireball going and all this stuff. So your brain is constantly switching unless you're just doing it really slowly, which I probably should be doing, but I'm being really stubborn here. Okay, don't go up there in the fire. Don't get killed there. All right. Oh, I, I think it's the same fireball. It's just from a different side. It's just the exact same one. Wow. Wow. For once, though, I'm hoping in the next video we won't have a super long walk pushing level. I do happen to know that there is one, and I... I I don't know if we're ever going to have an episode without a super long block pushing level. Maybe toward the end, because I do know that there is a distinct shortage of those uh, after uh, Warehouse 2, which is level 122. But yeah, I, I'm really hoping we won't, we'll have an episode without one of those. Okay, can we please not die? Alright, just keep going, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, or, well, it's not really swimming when there's fire involved, so I don't know what to call this. Okay, you're not killing me that time. Okay, thankfully this is fairly predictable. Okay, there we go, and then we can just exit. Yay! Torch completed. Hooray. And we will move on to Hard as Rock in the next video, guys. So thank you all so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button, and I will catch you on the flip side. So take care, and I will see you then. Have a good one, guys.